Unfortunately, you are going to be the worst player in the lobby in some of your Counter-Strike 2 matches. There's no way to get around it. There's no way to get past it. And you have to be the worst in your lobbies if you ever want to push yourself and become a better player. So today, I want to talk to you about how we can take you from being the worst player in the lobby and make it so that by the end of the game, you have found so much impact for your team that you give your team the best chance possible to win each match, even if you are, in quotes, the worst player on the team. Because guys, somebody has to be the lowest rank. Somebody has to be the least experienced. But that doesn't mean you have to provide no value to your team and drag your team down. So instead of dragging your team down, we're going to lift them up. And speaking of lifting people up, thank you guys so much. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers. It literally is a dream of mine to have a channel like this. And it just is so encouraging to post videos with all the support I get from you guys. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for that. It's actually insane. So yeah, let's talk about it. So you get into a lobby and you realize you're the worst player in there. You realize there is maybe professional players on the other team or really good players on your team. How are we going to make sure that you can be a good player even though you have the least experience? So the first thing that you need to do is realize that your job for the game is to not shoot, right? Your job is not to get frags and to uh drop 30 frags on the other team that is not your role this match if you queue another game and you are the highest rated player on the team then yes you need to be the fragger you need to be the one picking your team up your goal for this game when you are the lowest rated player on the scoreboard is to bring the floor of your team up you want to make sure that you are supporting your other players and making it so that you have as many 5v4 opportunities as possible as many man advantage situations so that it makes the job easier for everybody. What does this mean? This means you are not going to try to be taking aggressive plays. You are not going to be trying to open the round up every time. And because guess what? If you're the worst player, you're probably going to be the worst aimer too. So you're going to give the other team an advantage and screw your team over at the same time. No, what we need to do is get you to support your teammates. If you want to actually get better and learn, you need to be able to use utility to set these players up. You know, if they're playing a position Flash over top for them so that it blinds the other team and that they can fight with it, right? Throw utility that's going to support them and make them better. But at the end of the day, guys, if you want to be able to win games like this and, and get better, you need to be hard to kill. That is the most important thing. There have been so many games I'm playing where the worst player on the other team wants to just run it down and try to prove that he's better than everybody. And it's the easiest game of my life. You know what games are really hard is when I'm... I'm top three, top four in USA right now is when some level eight on face it I'm playing against is jump spotting B on Mirage and dropping smokes down and just delaying and, and being hard to kill so that his teammates can rotate in on time. He, he literally is winning them the game and winning them the rounds just by making it annoying to kill him. He may not even get a frag, but he's buying time for his team to rotate in. So if you're constantly giving up deaths and playing these aggressive spots, you're only going to give the other team an advantage. Instead, make it so annoying to deal with you. I may not be able to shoot, but you're not going to kill me. That is a great mindset to have. And, you know, you should let your teammates that are that are really good aimers, really good players, maybe sometimes pro players, let them play the spots where they're really going to perform and you fill the gaps. You be the one that learns from them and gets better through doing that, right? So, also what you need to understand is drop your teammates whenever you can, right? If you truly want to win, this is really hard because a lot of us have this ego inside of us that doesn't want to do this. But if you truly want to win and drop the player in op and get a Galil instead, right? Have them drop you a Galil or drop them in op and they give you a FAMAS or an MP9, right? I know it sucks because now you have a worse gun and you're the worst player in the lobby, but you're at least setting up your players that are going to have these key impactful spots to perform. And that's so important, right? So be that teammate that drops them. Be that teammate that's constantly... Uh, supporting them and making them you know be the stars that they they can be right because if you try to be the star and you try to be the player that's going to farm sure you might frag you might do better than you're supposed to but honestly you're really hurting your team because one that's not consistently going to happen right over over a hundred games if you're trying to be the star and, and frag you're probably going to lose 80 games because you know, the other team is just better than you and everyone on your team is better than you, right? It's just how it is. You need to understand your role in that game and that's how you're truly going to win these games is not by trying to do too much. A lot of you try to do too much, but at the end of the day, the most important thing is to have positive attitude. I love when I queue into a game and there's a lower ranked player on my team and they are just so positive and, and they're, you know, 
a B, even if they're annoying. Sometimes they're they're too annoying, but I don't care because I love it. I love the positive energy. It makes the team feel better. You know, more shots are going to hit. All this is going to happen. I hate when I queue into a game and I get a low level player that doesn't want to listen, that is constantly complaining. And I, my pet peeve, if you are ever the worst player in the lobby, my pet peeve is when somebody goes, man, I haven't even seen anybody this game. Good. We take those. We love those games when we don't have to do anything because our teammates are farming. That is a free win. I'm tired of so many people trying to play for stats instead of playing for the win. Your stats will get better if your team is winning. Trust me. Stop trying to be greedy and do too much because at the end of the day, you're going to lose the game for your team. So if you're ever sitting on the scoreboard with zero kills and maybe three deaths and your teammates have 20 kills, you'd be like, you guys are insane. Thanks for carrying me. This is awesome. I'm going to do everything I can when they come to my site. I'd rather hear that than, man, I can't kill anybody. I don't see anyone because you guys just kill them. Dude, like, who cares, man? The difference between playing this game to get better and playing this game to play for fun and play for stats. Cool. It's just annoying when I'm trying to compete and be in a competitive environment and I hear that whining and complaining. So that's what you need to do if you truly want to become a better player. It's not rocket science, guys. It really isn't. Just... You know be willing to do the jobs that people don't want to do so that means maybe you need to entry frag right maybe this just isn't your game and you're not doing much well one thing you can do is just entry frag and make that space uh, a player i want to highlight is nafany you know nafany when he was on cloud nine what he would do is on pistol round on ct pistol if they're retaking a bomb site and he was having a bad game, what he would do is he'd have a teammate get behind him and he would jump around a corner with his back turned to the opponent so that one, they can't hit the headshot and two, they have to put their crosshair to the sky to try to kill him. And then his teammate can swing in and get the easiest kill. Did he die a lot? Yes, he he got fragged a ton because you know he's not even trying to hit the opponent. But at the end of the day, he's creating that space and making it so that they can have a successful round whether or not he dies or gets uh, to stay alive, right? So just doing these kind of things and being a selfless teammate is really what truly separates you from being the bad player in the lobby, from you being someone that can be the middle of the lobby, the top of the lobby, based on impact. Stop looking at kills and frags and start looking at how impactful you were. How many rounds of the game did you win for your team because you threw a smoke or you threw a flash or you stayed alive on B bomb site while they were rushing you down? That is truly what is going to matter in those games. And like I said, when you finally get into a next lobby and you're the best rated player in the lobby, then that's your turn to worry about frags. Then that's your turn to really, you know, be the star and, and make the other team really annoyed because you're just running it down and shooting them, right? But just know the time and place of all this and you're going to be successful. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's keep grinding. I still have, you know, a lot of videos to post this year. So make sure you stay subscribed so you never miss out on any of that juicy content. So... Like I said, keep grinding. You guys are going to be stars one day. I believe in you. So join my Discord if you have any questions or comments. I'll make sure to respond to you. And you can join my nice community of really, really nice people trying to learn the game and get better. So catch you guys later. Peace out.